right, guys, let's see what we got in our box today. Should be some trapping supplies. Been waiting on these for a week now. Never had them take that long at F and T. Usually you order it by the end of the week you got it. So, a, little, a little bit disappointed in it. Let's see, let's see what they got here. Good, no living. Oh yeah, look at that. MB. Actually, not MB. This is a, a uh, Bridger, I believe, is what I bought there. Heavy, good. Right? Look at that thing. It's huge, ain't it? It's as big as the chair. Uh, where's my other stuff? Well, where's my other stuff? There it is. About to be upset. Backbreaker, Dobbins Lure, Backbreaker, very heavy caster lure, made by Dobbins Products, North Carolina. It's supposed to be the best stuff on the market right here. We're going to find out. We are going to find out. Well, nope, let's get on with it. for the item list. So there it is, a 330 Bridger Magnum Double Spring Body Grip Trap. I'm telling you, if you get magnums of anything, they're good, okay? Bridgers are exceptionally well. I like Bridger stuff, and uh, that, ought to be a, that ought to be a good trap, man. Would you look at the daggone hooks on this thing? The daggone safety hooks on that thing are huge. Look at them. That's going to be a... Boy, don't get your hand caught in that one. It'll take your arm off, <laughs> for sure. You pull back a nub... It'd definitely break it and you'd never be able to get it off yourself be careful with these traps when you guys get these kinds of traps what's the, kind of, what's the deal here what's i ain't never seen anything like that oh they use some kind of i ain't never seen them use a wire like that to anchor one of them together that's weird we will we'll get it out and use it here just so we got it fixed i didn't account for uh the twist and the length um so i shortened it about four foot when i twisted and um because i actually made it about four foot longer or well probably about two foot longer than what two to three foot longer than what i had norm originally done but i actually once you twist it here's the old path right there for where the, the pipe was laying, right? And everything, well now, here's how the new one is. It's way out there. There's the old, there's the new. It's probably about four to five foot difference in everything, so um, yeah. we. But there it is, it's twisted up, it's tied up, it'll work for now. We don't have to worry about it for right now. We'll fix it in the springtime when it's warm and we're getting ready to use it so everything should be just fine hold up fine um they snapped you know about five to six inches up uh, off of the ears of the water pump is where they snapped off at so uh, that was just single strand so i got doubled up now but if you do this take into consideration the twisting and the length and probably add i would say probably add you know uh five to six foot um maybe maybe eat well no no i would add 10 foot add 10 foot to it because if you add 10 foot to it and you twist it and you're good i mean if you get a little bit over you know like this side here was just a touch over um then all we did was just wrap it around the side of the pole like that and it was fine so um but yeah i'll have to clean all the rest of this up tomorrow but we got it fixed if you're looking at how to double up your pipe or your, excuse me double up your your um your cables if you got aluminum cable or some other type of flexible cable that you can twist into uh into uh um a cord of such 
you know, uh, to help strengthen it, then that's how you do it with a drill. You don't have to have a, a, a battery powered drill. You can use a, you know, uh, for, for that matter, you can just use old hand drill if you wanted to and do it. I mean, you'd be there forever, but you know, you could you could do it. You just need a chuck and you need a way to turn it, and uh, and you can twist those those two into one and strengthen up everything that way. So um, that's what we've done here, and uh, and it's working now. So. It got us back into the water, and uh, like I say, we're probably about, I'd say we're uh, every bit of five foot, yeah, probably about five foot difference now. I'd say there's an extra five foot of pipe hanging out that shouldn't be. And so, I mean, that's, that is what it is. But we'll fix it in the spring with some actual cable and everything and actually do it you know, that like uh, like we should have, I guess, at the beginning. I thought that would have worked. Evidently not. So uh, anyhow, let's get inside and on to the next. All right, guys, this white stuff. So my son come in and said, hey, the water line is completely stretched across here. Can't get into the cellar. I said, you're full of poop. That is not. It's always laid across right here, laid on the ground. He said, no, it's up in the air. So how'd it get up in the air? You know, I'm thinking he's talking about just one little bend. I and mean, I thought he's just being a, a little turd and stuff. Well. Come out here, sure enough, it went all the way in. And it, the end here is broken. The 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 aluminum here, it's broke. See, the, the you can see all of it there that we got to tie it with. What well, broke off, and here's what's built up on it. See, the lime deposit, that's what that is. That's lime deposit. I think, is that lime deposit, y'all, or calcium? If that's lime deposit, then I can make the best moonshine in the world right here okay <laughs> because mark and digger said so on moonshiners they've been chasing down limestone water and i have got limestone water if that's lime i think that's lime y'all i'm almost positive it's lime at first i thought it might be calcium build up but now i'm thinking it's probably lime and it's probably lime build up from the limestone water that's down deep in that well right there i think but y'all tell me what that is. Is that limestone or what? I thought it was probably broke down here on these ears, but no, it broke up high right there. Both sides broke right there. It just snapped too. I guess I'm gonna have to make it tighter. Can you see what you're Like, it, yeah, you can. I did it like that. I guess we're gonna make it a little bit better of a thing and send it back down the hole. I was gonna leave it up, but I'm kind of afraid to leave it up here for the rest of the winter. I'm afraid we'll hook it back up next year. It won't work if I do that. So I think I'm gonna hook it back up and send it back down the hole. And uh, next next warm day we got, I'll turn it on and flush it real quick. I ain't turned it on for about a month. That's just craziness there. I don't know. All right, let's get it, let's get it done. Man, that, that's, that, I, I probably tell you, I don't know, I'm torn. I probably should get some real cable, some real, real cable and put down there some, uh, yeah, that's probably what I ought to do. Cause that stuff, it's just gonna rot again. Look at that. No, it'll just rot again. Well, at least there ain't no aluminum in my water now. I mean, as far as, but I don't want to use steel on there neither. I don't know what to do. I guess I'm gonna have to, yeah, brainstorm. All right, let's figure this out. This is how you twist your stuff up, put, chuck it up in a drill. Start twisting. Look at that. What it look like down there? Okay, here we go.
Hang on. There's our eyelet right there. Everything's good and twisted. Here's what we're gonna do. You hook this on there, because this was not, this didn't have an issue, right? In fact, I'm gonna walk that down there, tighten it up on that. You think? Or just leave it slacked? Yeah, because it, unra it unravels. So anyhow, it's good and tight. You can see there. Okay, and that'll help hold it a little bit. So we're going to do this one. Put it through the eyelet on the pipe on the pump, and twist it back up to itself, and then do the other side yeah, and be done. We got. Okay. Right, guys, so we've been swamped with stuff today, just super busy. Just gonna give you a quick update on everything. And I'm going to bed. Excuse me, it's like 2.30 in the morning, so I'm gonna go to bed. Um, sweet potatoes, we got more in here growing. So we're gonna have to do something with these really soon. As you can see, they're ready to go. These sweet potatoes are coming down. They're going to vine down. And what I'll do um, is I'll just let them grow out and then hang over this and go down the ground. Once they touch the ground, um, I'll just let them bush out. But I don't think there's any need for them to go any longer than that once they touch air because I'm focusing on them there. Everywhere that these touch dirt outside, they would produce another root, which would produce more tubers. Um, I don't need that to happen. I need all the energy to go right there and make the tuber all right there. So that's that's going to be how I'm going to get them to focus all their growth there. I'm still, but I'm going to have to let them grow to do it. Anyhow. Oh, I'm so sorry. But that's how we're going to get it done. We'll let them grow down, touch the ground, and then snip them so they'll quit growing. And then them bush out. I'm going to let them just you know, take over down there. That just helps with photosynthesis. Um, I thought about maybe running them up, you know, like let them come out here like this and come up to a hook or something, but I don't think they grow like that. So I don't think it's feasible. Um, over here, we're starting to get dark again because of the leaves and stuff. So we're gonna have to start finagling leaves again and getting them moved out of the way and everything like that. See, so. Worry about that tomorrow though. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beans now, or peas, excuse me, um, growing. So that's that's good. Um, having to water this every day now because they're sucking it dry. Uh, let's see here. Mercy sakes. Excuse me. Peppers are looking good. Looking really good. And just a little bit more growth. I'd say another two, three weeks maybe. They should be ready to go. Um, maybe sooner. Smack the plant around a little bit. And then uh, get some more pollination occurring. That might not be happening. You can get out here and shake it like this if you want. Shake shake all right he shakes the pollen gets some pollinating um let's see we got lettuce growing here lettuce growing here <laughs> part of a lettuce anyhow uh, just kind of falling apart there all right there we go there we go uh, a lot of cilantro here uh, i'm still trying to figure out how to do this more efficiently on that um 
peach tomato looking good. I'm gonna have to get that into a bigger container soon. All them tomatoes are looking pretty decent. 7.35 browns is dying. It's just not, it's not, I mean, there's a good leaf right there, so maybe it'll come back, I don't know. We're looking pretty, pretty crappy. Hopefully this one will be the one that takes off, but it's not looking like it's gonna take off anytime soon. So I don't know what to do with that plant. Everything else, they're looking pretty good. Carrot, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with this carrot tomorrow and these carrots tomorrow. Need to be separating these into their own cups, letting them grow till they get a you know, pretty good size and then switching them over into bigger containers and keep moving on. One of these cilantros tomorrow, one of them four back there, probably this one right here, uh, will end up over here in the grow tote. Not sure where, but we're going to. I was going to um, today. I was going to get some, get these two cucumber plants fixed up to where they were um, having more room for the roots in the bottom. Um, didn't get to it today. Been super, super busy with all kinds of stuff, Fox News and stuff. So um, anyhow. Uh, we just been way too busy to, to fool with it today, but um, hopefully tomorrow is a little bit slower of a day. I'll be able to get out there and um, show you guys this stuff, uh, like fix these up to where, you know, they, they got room for the roots and show you guys how to do it and what I've come up with for them. Um, but they're looking really good. Look at that one there. I mean, it's almost to the top where the ceiling's at, so I'm getting ready to have to hang a, 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 hoop, a hook up there for it. I think that I'm going to run that way along the wall. I'm actually going to let it run on the wall there um, or really close to it. Maybe not directly on the wall because you might have a you know, problem with moisture or whatever and it wouldn't be good in your house. But you know, maybe about two, three inches off the wall, let it grow that way over into that corner. Um, and then uh, let's see here. What else was I thinking? Oh, I didn't get to go out and put this stuff out today. I went over, ran checked them real quick, made sure it wasn't nothing in them, and ran back. I mean, literally just, you know, like that. How'd it go again? Just like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, I was just, I'm more out and wouldn't even be in here if it wasn't for uh, needing to be in here, fixing up this stuff and, and watering it and everything, because I didn't get to water it none today. Um, anyhow, eggplants looking good right there. Tomatoes are looking good. This tomato plant looks wonderful. The bean is growing. Looks really good since we've transplanted it. So uh, it's really starting to take off there. I can't wait till it really starts to run and gets like this one. That's gonna be super exciting. And I'm really excited for that. Just wanna get a few beans out of it. Uh, the potato right here, that Kennebec, it's looking really good. It's doing really well. And like I said, I fertilized yesterday and I can tell a good a good bit of difference in everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, whenever I fertilize, and I can tell the difference the next you know, day or two after I fertilized, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with that because I know that I didn't overdo it and I didn't underdo it. I did it just right, the right amount of water, the right amount of fertilizer and everything's happy and healthy. All right, so I'm super excited about that. Um, these plants, they're looking good. This one here, I don't know why it's looking kind of piddly. You know, I mean, it's, it's uh, I don't know. It's just not not doing it so that one would be cold um, this one here is looking wonderful I mean look at that thing get it go gone right I mean it's just it's a beast uh, this one here yeah you can see getting roots everywhere on it you can see that I corrected the um, the uh, uh, ribbon vine see the ribbon vine there and you can see that I corrected it I cut it off you can see it's healed up completely right there but we have you know, other issues going on here. So like all these flowers don't need to be on there. So you press the flowers off like so. Well, that vine right there, that's not bad. They can stay, I guess, and then make a secondary. Actually, I don't need it because I got a secondary right there. See the secondary on the other side right there? That's a healthy secondary. So I don't need this secondary. So we're just gonna break it off as well. So that, get that jump going, that way you can you know, really, really cipher what's what's going on. You can see that right there? That was just that, that ribbon vine trying to pop back. All right, see how it was just trying to grow back? Okay, we don't want that. So this part here will eventually heal up completely and be a single vine. 
and that's what we're wanting. You see all that ribbon vine back here? We don't want that. Um, you see the, the issues that it causes, you know, with with everything. Look at the way that that root is underneath that leaf you node know, like that. It's just not, it's not good. Um, you really don't want to grow them out. And to be honest with you, after after much consideration and thought about this stuff. Um, so I'm not bashing my 581. I'm not bashing the fact that it's from a, a uh, 2261 Schmidt or 1673 Bartimus, but it's obvious that the 2528 Gettys had a ribbon vine issue because that's what the 1673.5 Bartimus is. It's a, it's a 2528 Gettys to self. Okay, that means he's self-pollinated. He took a male flower from that same plant and pollinated his female and made the 1673.5 Bartimus. So obviously in that genetic line of the 2528 Gettys, there is a ribbon vine issue. And what I had done is I had now introduced that into my 2261 Schmidt um, line. And I should not have done that. Um, but I didn't know. I didn't know any better. Didn't know that, you know, if you did that, even though I used the good plant, I did not use the the um, ribbon vine plant to pollinate with. But even though I didn't do that, it was in the genetic profile, and because it was in that genetic makeup, it has now caused me problems with my 581. What I was going to make my foundation seed. So now, yeah, I might be able to get you know one or two good ones, right, and and everything. But at the same time, you know. It's, it's like this right here. This right here was the 950 cook, all right? It says the bigger, this was the bigger and better plant. Now look at it, it's tiny, it's no good, right? It's just little, dank, rank, little plant now, right? Now look at this 950 cook. Or, yeah, that's a 950 right here. Look at that thing. That 950 cook is rocking and rolling, guys. I mean, it's longer, it's done laid down. It's got all these big roots popping out of it. I mean, it's ready to it's ready to go in a greenhouse and take off and go, right? So if I was going to grow one, I'd probably grow the 950 this year. Um, I really want to grow that that ribbon, you know, the um, the 2061 Schmidt plant. I think I might be able to correct it with some better genetics in there. But I don't want to say this year. This year, okay. I'm not saying it's a bad one, but this year I don't want to fight bad genetics and tried to, you know, because last year I had to fight the 2061 Schmidt all year long, right? I mean, it was just an all year struggle to even get a pumpkin to the scale because of the, the blowhole pumpkin that I had. You guys can go check all those videos out. I had the blowhole pumpkin that I had to deal with. I finally cut her off of the main vine and let her take off on her secondaries and her tertiaries. And then I had Elsa and Elsa was a nice, big, beautiful pumpkin, but she, she just the plant just wasn't given all that it had and even though it was pollinated late i still think i should have had like a, a 800 pound pumpkin not a 581 pound pumpkin but maybe i'm wrong but uh, anyhow um, i'm just i'm just you know i wanted to grow that i thought that would be a good one but now after it's produced a ribbon vine plant i mean the other plant looks great you know there's there's nothing wrong with the other plant i mean it's, you can see it right here i mean it's looking great look at that thing does that not look great plant looks good still got the good small leaves on it you know everything about this plant looks wonderful right i mean it's it's a good healthy looking plant and i like it right but do i want to have that same issue as i'm trying for master gardener and i'm trying for a jacket this year do i want to pressure myself with having to grow my seed that could be flawed and get stuck in the middle of the run right and here it is not performing how it should be just like it did last year to me right so while i think it can perform i think there's genetic potential there and i am going to build on it i don't think that i'm going to grow that one this year i think if i have to choose which one i'll grow it'll be the 950 cook and here's why 950 cook went heavy okay not only did it go heavy it's got the 2261 schmidt in there this 2261 schmidt is the pollinator right so therefore and everything that i'm seeing is looking phenomenal on this plant, right? I mean, it's looking, look at all these. It's the only one with tendrils like this, right? I mean, everything is is as it should be, right? And it don't matter that I just broke that one off, guys, don't worry about it. They don't need to be on there anyhow. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it is, it, everything is as it should be. So I might 
So if I have to grow one of my seeds this year, it will probably be the um, the 950 cook, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll I'll grow that one out. I'll have it. It's a 2261 Schmidt. I'll add on to it better genetics. And what I'm thinking is for this year, I do know that I'm going to definitely grow the Tiger King. 2350 Ginger is definitely going to be grown. The 1464, which is um, Carrie Gross's pumpkin, it's a 1501 Vanderwild in the self, will also definitely be grown this year. Okay, guys? So those are two 1501 Vanderwildens to self that I'm definitely going to grow. Big, beautiful orange pumpkins. Okay? Um, now what's left is to, de to debate what else am I going to throw behind that, right? What else am I going to do? So I'm going to grow my 950. All right? That gives me three big orange pumpkins. And then... I'm going to try to grow two big white pumpkins. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking the Wallace uh, 2201 and the 2077 Brant are going to be the two that I'm going to grow this year, I think. Now, don't quote me on that. No, 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 I'm wrong. Sorry, back up. The 2201 Wallace and, because I forgot, the 2195 Till tile okay so i will grow i will grow lucy at 2195 uh, i will grow that one and then i will grow the 2201 um uh uh, uh, uh whatever ron, uh, ron um wallace i'll grow the wallace seed. so those will be the ones that i'm gonna grow 2195 2201 my 950 uh the 2350 ginger and the 1464 gross all right those are that that's going to be my tops that i'm going to grow and uh, and there'll be some other ones planted i'm sure and just for backups and backups to the backups and um probably uh, after that i'll probably um you know end up having a call or whatever you know so there's going to be other ones thrown in the mix just to you know make sure that there's something there in case something fails or happens um i'm going to be growing the uh, thousand point five brown green squash, and the eleven fifty nine point or eleven fifty nine, yeah, eleven eleven fifty nine. Yo, uh, both of those green squash are the ones that I'm going to grow. No, 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 take that back. The ten, the 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 one thousand five point five brown, and the sixteen twenty something um, tile. All right, I'll, be, I'll grow that one. I keep forgetting I got them two seeds. Um, he gave me he gave me both of those. So, yeah, I'll be growing his green squash and Brown's green squash, and I'll be smashing those two together. Um, so that's that. Now I have Morrow's I got to grow, and I have other things I got to grow. There's a lot of things I got to grow. Watermelons I got to grow. I make watermelon beds. I've got to make cantaloupe beds. I mean, there's so much that's got to be done. It's, it's, it's crazy. I may have to shrink my garden in order to make sure everything else is going to grow. So I uh, might not plant as much in the garden so that I can grow more competition stuff or yeah, we'll figure it out. We're gonna plant everything. <laughs> I'm a plant junkie. Um, so anyhow, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll find a way to get everything out there and, and, and in the ground and growing. There might be some things I didn't grow last year, that I grew last year that I might not grow this year just because there's no need to, like loofah gourds. Um, I'll probably grow those, but I'll probably build a trellis for them to grow on, a really big one, so I don't have to grow them in the garden. Um, there's other things that I'll grow. You know, sunflowers I'll grow again, but you got to make a new sunflower bed or patch, rather. I've got to make, um, I got to make giant corn patch. I got to make giant amaranth patch i gotta i mean there's just so much stuff that i gotta make guys it's it's unreal but we're gonna get it done and uh and we'll do it sufficiently effectively and uh and uh, get the ball rolling on stuff so anyhow uh enough for me i uh, just wanted to give you that little bit of update a little bit of insight and info and uh we appreciate you watching we'll see you tomorrow right here in the hollers and hills of west virginia don't forget to smash that like button Hit that notification bell. Don't forget to share. Thank you, good sir. You're welcome. And 
subscribe.